Hello, welcome back to reaction of the New Year banner. Um, okay, so once again, I'm doing this while on a break at work, so you may hear some background noises. Sorry about that. Well, let's see what this New Year banner has. Hopefully it's not as busted as the winter banner. I can't handle all of this power creepy bullshit back to back. Like, just make it plain Jane. Make it like, you know, just make it whatever. Fucking tits. What the f- <clears throat> What about that? Nerthuse. She is a colorless. Whatever. What the fuck is- Why are there- God damn it! Stop it with all these new skills, dude! Jesus Christ! I just put Clash in everyone! Now I gotta replace that shit? Alright, to be fair, it looks like with an icon that has a wolf, I'm assuming it's for beast units only. Attack speed wild. If number of adjacent allies other than beast or dragon allies are less than or equal to one, or a unit is transformed, okay, so it has to be beast only, grants attack speed plus seven to unit during combat and grants special cooldown charge plus one to unit per attack during combat, and restores seven HP to unit after combat. Okay, so this is basically just a way better finish for your beast units. That's kind of nice. Okay, I do like this skill. As, as, come, like, as, like, fucking exhausting as it is to see new skills every single fucking banner, especially A slots. New A slots, like, there's way too fucking many A slots, dude. Anyways, as I was saying, as exhausting as it is to see all these new A slots, this is a cool skill. I do like this quite a lot. And I might need to get some copies of this. In fact, getting a copy of this Nerdews and foddering her to my uh, ether is, sounds pretty nice. I actually still have... When ether dropped, I got two copies of her and I still have not used her at all because I have no idea what I want to do with her. And I'm kind of just... I'll be honest, I'm just waiting for, like, the beast units that I want to put her fodder on. I'm kind of just waiting for them to be in hollow forms, so I'm just not worrying about it. Because, like, I don't even really use them that, that much these days anyway, you know what I mean? Like, I, like if I if I were to pimp out my New Year Elite, for example, with an Aether, with all that fodder, I'd be doing it for a screenshot. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I would use her just because. Maybe I might, just because, but... It, I digress. I digress. All right, what does cute paper crane do? Uh, hold on a sec. All right, I'm back. All right, so cute paper crane gives her Canto 2, special Excel, a start of combat if you use HP per quarter, grants X stats, units max, special cooldown count, times two plus five. Wait, what? So, like, oh, well, she has that minus one, so it's four, eight, so it's plus 13 all stats. If you give her, like, ether or miracle, I guess. That's cute. Neutralizes effects, guarantees foes follow-up attacks, and effects that prevent units follow-up attacks, and reduces damage for foes first attack by 25% of unit speed during combat. Wow. So if you have, like, 80 speed? That's still only 20%, though. That's actually not that much. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, that's actually not that good. Wait! Neutralizes effects that guarantees full fall-up attacks. Reduces damage from foe's first attack by 25% of unit speed. Oh wait, that's way fucking better than I thought. That's flat. That's a flat damage reduction. That's not percent damage reduction. Okay, no, no, no. That's way fucking... That's like Asker. That's, a, that's Asker style damage reduction right there. It's only for first attack, but still, if, you, if she has that a few, if she doesn't get doubled, I mean, god damn, that's fucking, that's kind of good right there. So, as I was saying, if you, have, if you have like 80 speed in combat, that's minus 20. That's minus 20 damage in combat. Jeez, that's really good. Okay, uh, where was I? Uh, at start a turn, if unit is adjacent to only be whatever, and then normal, okay. There's not a lot in her PRF, it's just stats, and then, like, really, the, it's the good 
damage reduction. She has NFU stats and the good damage reduction on first hit. That's fine. It's pretty good. It's not that... Oh, and she has Kanto too, I guess. Uh, she also has Food of Life, which I believe is Tempo... Well, let me just look at it. Start a combat, if you use HP as a quarter, inflict speed, dead minus five on foe during combat, reduce damage for foe's first stack by 40%. Okay, so you got... You have both styles of damage reduction. Damn. That first hit's gonna do, like, no damage to her. Uh, units next attack deals damage equal to the total damage reduced. That's really nice. And then Tempo and Gravity. Yeah, Fruit of Life is a really good B-slot. That's why... <laughs> it's not why I plus 10 normal to use, but, like, it, it helped. Speed Smoke and whatever, whatever. Okay. Oh, she comes with Ether. That's cute. Oh, very cool. So she's not, like, broken by any means. I think she's gonna be hard to kill, but that aside. Oh, how fun. Dude, I want that A slot. That's what I want. Her A slot's really cool. I like that A slot a lot. Who is that? Kazir? Kazir? Is it a little early for it? Well, dude, you know why it feels weird? It's just because Book 7 had a lot of OCs. Like, the main villain, it splits into, like, six characters, pretty much. Like, so I, like I was gonna say, it feels weird that Kassir is, like, here right away when we just got Legend Kassir, or Mythic Kassir, but, like, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, what is she? An infantry mage? What the fuck? Infantry no follow-up for... Hello? What does that do? Hold on. I'm losing my shit. Scroll up. I don't care about any of this right now. I want to see what that other thing does. <laughs> Low speed res 4 is also cute. Uh, infantry infantry no follow up 4. At start of turn, if you use within two spaces of an ally, grants no follow up and the following status to unit for one turn. Unit can move to a space adjacent to any ally within two spaces. A start of turn grants no follow-up to infantry allies within two spaces of unit. Oh. It's actually not that great. <laughs> it's actually not that much of an increase. It's negligible. To, and to say... Wow, no, it's actually just a negligible, like, change. So the only difference from three to four is this also gives the buff to the wearer. I mean, if you can give this to your supports, it's fine, but like... See, the whole point of having this on your support is your support's not typically doing a whole lot of combat, so like, I guess it doesn't matter that much. It'd be nice to have on like, Garrick, I guess. I, I typically use infantry no follow-up on like, my Garrick. I, I recently put it on my Gatekeeper too, actually. I have it on like, my Fallen Maria. I have it on my Legendary Robin. I have it on like, a lot of characters that can like, both like, do combat and support, I guess. Hold on, am I reading, like, is it really not that great? I start a turn, if unit is within two spaces of an ally, grants NFU and the following status to unit for one turn. Unit can move to a space adjacent to any ally. Within two spaces. Okay, so you have, like, the oath effect, no follow-up, and then normal infantry NFU. Th yeah, it's not that amazing. I mean, it's not bad by any means. It's fine. It's, the only difference between three and four is that this also gives the wearer some buffs, but that's it. It's its utility remains the same. Damn, I was excited too. Well, I was more nervous because I didn't... I mean, I'm glad it's not like super different. So you don't need to like run out and give this to all your characters that have infantry and have you three already. Basically what I'm saying is... It's cute if you can give this to someone, but, like, if you already have the 3 version, that's more than enough. This isn't good enough. This isn't, like, better enough that I would go out and get this for my characters that I have it on already. Well, anyways. And then Light is Time. Of course, that's kind of broken. We know what that does. Well, I don't remember verbatim what it does, but I also don't care to go back and read it. Uh, Faded Paper Fan. 
Special trigger, if a unit initiates combat within two spaces of an ally, grants five all stats to the unit, reduces foe speed and res during combat by 20% of unit speed at start of combat, and reduces the percentage of foe's non-special, reduced damage by X percent skills by 50% during combat. And also, if it is unit's first combat initiated by unit or first combat initiated by foe, that turn reduces damage by foe's first damage by 70% during combat. Where's the end of bracket? If unit initiates combat or unit is within two spaces of an ally after combat, if unit attacked, inflict status on target and foes within two spaces of target, preventing counterattacks due to the next actions. Okay. So, keeping with tradition, the <laughs> what do you what's the word, what's the word I'm looking for? The um, limited is that what I'm no that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, seasonal that's what the seasonal alt is better than the original. I mean, I... Okay, she's not better. It's just... I think she has a better secondary ability. So, like, Kassir inflicts panic. But, like, this version of Kassir inflicts uh, flash. And I think that that's just way better. But, I guess, to be fair, the other... The OG is, you know, a cab unit. And this is an infantry unit. But... No, this is better because the infantry unit can take advantage of Guidance 4. So they can, like, on your Ether Raid's defense, that makes this way more oppressive. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's... I guess there's merits for both sides, but... I, I think this is probably a little better than original Kassir, which is sad because Kassir literally came out last month. <laughs> but, you know, that's just the way... That's the way of the game, you know? That's just how it goes. Units get power grept month to month these days. It's not like every six months. It's month to month. Freaking ridiculous. Anyways, let's move on. To what else there is? So far, the best thing on this banner is that A skill on your teams. I like that a lot. Idiot Kana, I could actually care less. <laughs> Who the fuck here? Bro, dude, the duo better be fucking insane. Because how is it the year of the dragon and the only dragon we get is this fucking idiot? Wow, what a joke, right? Fuck this shit. Attack Red Scowl, that's cute. I don't even give a fuck what your shit does. Fuck you. Dragonstone idiot. Get off my screen. Where's Degincia? Well, yeah, no. What? Where's Nasir? Where's Gareth? Where's Kurth Naga? It's where am I Tellius dragons for years, bro? This is some bullshit. You know what? That all that is what in the? F all right, Zen, Zen. Zen and peace. Peace and love? Are these bitches dragons for New Year's? Hello? I was gonna say, where's Ranolf? Can we, can we at least round out the cats for New Year's? Like, hello? What is this? No Ranolf, no Nasir, no like other cool Tellius dragons like Eno. Well, I, okay, look, to be fair, all the dragons I've mentioned so far have like Halloween alts. But like it's the year of the dragon they give us a stupid fucking idiot child in the form of Kana? Come on, man! Alright, uh, let's see what these idiots do. Happy New Year! Year of the dragon, we get like all mages pretty much. Flying blue mage. Alright. Wait, they're flying? How? They're not riding anything. Let us bless them. My brother in Christ. <laughs> They're just levitating. My god. See, it's because flying units are so far and above the meta pick unit for summoner duels that like even though it doesn't make sense, they're like, "Yup. They're they're just going to be flying units because because we want them to sell and we want to make money. If we make them infantry units, they might not sell. So let's just say they levitate. They're flying. Man, fuck you, IS. What is this bullshit? Why am I so pissed off about this? 
All right. Zen, peace and love. Goddess Tamari. Uh, special Excel on turn two onwards enables Canto 1. Great. Start of turn, if unit's HP is above a quarter, grants six attack and res, and foe cannot make a follow-up attack to unit and allies with two spaces of unit for one turn. At start of combat, if unit's HP is above a quarter, grants five all stats, and the following effects to unit during combat. All stats plus X. X equals turn number plus, uh, times two for a max of eight. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it started uh, on turn three onward, unit deals... <laughs> Plus Y damage. Y equals highest total bonuses among unit and allies within two spaces of unit. Excluding AoE. Uh, on turn four onward, if unit initiates combat and unit's res is greater than or equal to the foe's res plus five, unit attacks twice. If times gate is active on unit, or if times grip is active on target, or on foes within two spaces of target, Turn number is treated as a minimum of four. What? Well, how does time... What? Time's grip. Uh, inflicts minus four all stats during combat. Neutralizes unit skills during allies combat through units next... At, wait, what? Oh, what? What? You can't just drop that and not... How does it even happen? What? She must have some other PRF skill that has that bullshit. All right. Sabotage, speed, and res three, okay? Future sighted. After foe's start of turn skills trigger, if the closest foe's in cardinal direction of unit, or for the closest foe's in cardinal direction of unit, if unit's res is greater than or equal to foe's res plus X, X is equal to the distance from unit to foe times three minus five, Wait, what? Man, why do you have an easier activation clause than fucking Seether? That's annoying. And if Times Grip is not active on foe, that foe's action ends immediately and inflicts Times Grip on foe. Well, where the fuck is Times Grip? What even is... How did... You can't just... How? How, where, and why? You can't just say Time Grip... And not like where is it coming from? It must be their duo button. That that's that's the only thing left. Uh, and where the fuck was I? This character is stupid. Uh, ends whatever foe. If unit is within three spaces of an ally, grants four all stats to unit. Unit makes guaranteed fall up attack, reduce damage to foes first attack by thirty. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, times bullshit. Neutralizes unit skills during allies combat. Oh, is that like last well, like just a feud effect, right? Okay, so where's their duo button? That's gotta have time grip on it. Boop. Wow, it's a bouncing bubble ball. Okay. Duo skill. Grants times gate. Thank God. We know where it is now. And special cooldown charge plus one per attack during combat uh, to unit and allies within four spaces of unit for one turn. What does times gate do? Well, now I'm just confused. There's too many things in this character's kit to keep track of. It's like, if this, then this. If that, then this. If this, then that. Why can't it be... Ugh, God damn it. This game's getting too convoluted. I already have no idea what this character does, and I just read it all. Ask me what this character does. Go ahead and ask me. I have no fucking idea, and I just read it. Oh my god. <laughs> Why is it so complicated? Oh look, other Kana. I don't care. I don't get it. Uh, so you can spark. Uh. 
Okay. Hold on. I need to go back to that. Alright, we're back. Okay. Alright, now that I know where Times Gate is coming from. Okay, Times Gate. Right? It gives you guard. Okay. Oh my god. What the fuck is Times Gate? Okay. Grants times gate and special cooldown charge plus one per attack during combat. Okay, so so the dual button is just guard and times gate. Okay, well, well, what is times gate? I don't get it. Like, what does times gate do? You didn't tell me that yet. The fuck. All this says is if Times Great Times Gate isn't active, then Times Grip takes over. I don't get it. I don't I think I'm officially I think the game finally released a character that is officially too convoluted for me to understand. I think this unit is I need PM1 to make his little simplified chart for me to understand what this character does and that's the first time i've actually needed that this is retarded man ah or maybe i am i don't know if some people don't like that i use that word i don't care because that's what this is this is dumb i actually don't get it Okay, I need to... Hold on. Alright, hear me out. I have a whole paragraph of like... This... I summed up Goddess Tamari and I still have a paragraph written down. Hold, hold Okay, so... It has cooldown minus one. When turn is two onward, you get Canto one. Then when your HP is above a quarter, you get attack res plus six... And no follow-up for the foe to yourself and allies in two spaces. You also get five all stats. You also get eight all stats. If it's turn four, otherwise it's, you know, it's like two, four, six, up to eight, right? So on and so forth. Then on turn three, you get plus damage based on blue buffs for yourself and allies within two spaces. But just for yourself, right? Then, fuck's sake, on turn four and above, if your res is greater than your foe's res plus five, you get brave hits. But if you have time gate on yourself or time grip on your foe or foes within two spaces of your foe, the turn count is counted as four. Bro, my brain hurts. Oh, okay, this isn't even her C skill either, dude. What's her... C skill do. I kind of blanked when I read that. Not gonna, not gonna lie. I kind of blanked on future sighted. All right, future sighted. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so her C skill is basically all about times grip, and her duo button is all about times gate. Oh, <sighs> dude, I don't think I'm smart enough to play with this character <laughs> oh my god I, I don't even really know exactly I don't even I'm not confident that I'm ever going to remember exactly what this unit even does that's basically what I'm getting at here it might be time oh do we call it quits is this the unit where we just throw up our hands and say nah I'm good dude game's over it's been fun there's too much bullshit now. There's too much to keep track of. I don't know what I'm even doing anymore. Oh my god, dude. I got a college degree and I don't know what this character does. <laughs> okay, alright. Okay, that's enough of this. I Look, someone smarter than me is going to have to explain to me what this character can even do. I got my cheat sheet. This is good enough, I guess. But, like... 
I mean, it's a duo character, right? So it's, you know, it's got the arena scoring. It, it, this character kind of just screams like summoner duels to me, right? Right? Because it's got effects where you want to keep yourself close knit to your allies. And that's like, that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to summoner duels. It's like either your tank is better, either your tank is good enough to not die or it's not. And then you start your trade war. That's kind of what summoner duels boils down to. It's kill your opponent's tank and start trading. And vice versa, right? So I feel like this unit... This feels like an... See, I don't know. Because it, it's, it feels like this is a speedy unit. Is this unit going to be all speed and res? So... This unit feels like a like a fast New Year Asker kind of, minus the DR. Except they're gonna have a lot of res. They do get some DR if I they do, right? Don't they? Yeah, they get 30% DR on first hit. But then that's it. Okay, so they don't really have DR. Okay. Okay, what does grip do? Inflicts minus four all stats, neutralizes unit skills during combat through units next act. Okay. So is this a support? This isn't a self-sustain, right? Like Asker, this isn't... Okay, so this is more of like a... Is this like a support nuke? I'm not even... Okay, I think this is kind of a nuke slash support. So is support in the form of, of time's grip? Question mark? But then they have a bunch of... Like, nuking capabilities in... Ah, uh, jeez. Oh, man. I miss when the Winter Banner was... Was the most complicated thing in the game. Now there's this. I think it's just a nuke. And then they, they support with, like, Time's Grip. Right? I feel like that's what it is. And then the Duo button is also supportive in nature because it gives you the guard to all your allies within four spaces and then times gate but what's the point of putting times gate on your allies does that matter hold on is times gate just for her i need you to pop up the duo button again <coughs> oh excuse me uh, grants times gate and special cooldown charge plus one per attack during combat to unit and I was <coughs> excuse me so what's the point of having times gate on your allies that that isn't I don't understand that that's what I'm stuck on right now let me go back to the web so I think we're I think we're kind of in the dark until we get the unit and then we look at the dual button, and the dual button tells us what Time Gate does, right? Because they're not telling us what Time Gate does. As far as I can tell, it does nothing, but it must do something, right? Because otherwise, what's the point of having Time's Gate on your allies? Because the only thing that the, the kit on this character is telling me is that if Time's Gate exists, or if Time's Gate doesn't exist, then all these other things happen. That the... Uh, Anyways, whatever. Are you as frustrated with this as I am? Let me know, because I, I don't... Look, man. This game's getting too complicated. Characters are getting too convoluted. I I, I, I like the A skill on, on their thews, and I'm going to pretend nothing else exists. Okay, bye. We gotta let it